this case is a, of a patient who presents with the right exophthalmos and these are the angiographic images and I will browse through the images so you can just have an idea. And if I go to the coronal images, these are the coronal images of the same patient. Now as I start to browse the images, what you will notice is that there is obvious right exophthalmos. And another thing which was noticed on the axial images is that the right superior ophthalmic vein, this vessel, is mildly distended as compared to the other side and also and also this is relatively more enhancing as compared to the contralateral left side another thing if i just window it for you you will observe that this part this vessel is the internal carotid artery and this part is the right cavernous sinus this is opacified or this is showing contrast pretty much early as compared to the contralateral side which is the left side and now if I show you the coronal images you can appreciate the superior ophthalmic vein more clearly on this side and also you will see that there is enlargement and congestion of the rectus muscles which are more uh, the superior rectus the medial rectus and the inferior rectus as compared to the contralateral side muscles secondly as I browse through these images uh, towards the uh, posteriorly to the, to the cavernous sinus region. In this area, you can appreciate that there is very obvious enhancement of the right, right cavernous sinus region and it is very closely resembling the right ICA as well in contrast. Whereas on the other side, you can appreciate mainly the ICA only and you cannot appreciate the cavernous sinus on this region. Cavernous sinus is usually the last uh, sinus to opacify and show contrast whereas in this case it is showing contrast uh, relatively early as compared to the other side. Uh, so this shows an abnormal communication between the carotid circulation and the cavernous sinus region and if I to window it here so there is probably some sort of communication in this level uh, from where the contrast is leaking uh, into the cavernous sinus the diagnosis of this case was right-sided carotico cavernous fistula there were basically two types of CCF or carotico cavernous fistulas the direct type is when there is a direct communication between the intracavernous part of the internal carotid artery and the cavernous sinus region and the blood is shunting directly from the ICA into the cavernous sinus whereas the other type is indirect where there is a communication between the carotid circulation and the cavernous sinus but it's through some branches which could be from the ICA or it could be from the ECA as well. So in this case my suspicion was that this is more likely a direct uh, fistula, direct CCF. Uh, however, even on probing the patient's history, there was no significant history of any trauma uh, there. And the direct variety is more likely to be associated with any previous history of trauma where obviously uh, there was some rupture of the ICA vessel wall and with, which was resulting in a leakage of the blood from the ICA into the cavernous sinus. The indirect type of uh, CCF is uh, has a more predilection for postmenopausal female patients and this was a male patient and so I concluded that this is more likely a direct CCF but obviously for further characterization and obviously for treatment the patient was referred for a digital subtraction angiography 
and uh, referred for the intervention radiology uh, people so they can just make a further diagnosis. And uh, I hope you like this case and thanks a lot for uh, your time and listening.